So first, we need to create a cylinder. In the cylinder options, let's make it make the cup to nothing and the depth to four. Now let's go to the front view and rotate the cylinder by 90 degrees. Next, let's move the origins to the left side of the cylinder. Next, select the right side and scale it by 0.6. Now we need to create 16 loop cuts. Okay, next let's make it shade smooth. Now let's split the view and make the left side into a shader editor. Now we need to select a cylinder and let's add in a new material. Next let's delete the principal BSDF and let's add in a transparent shader. Then animation shader. Next let's maximize the shader editor by pressing control space and let's add in a color ramp and a gradient texture node. Next, select the gradient texture node and press Ctrl T. Next, let's connect the gradient to the color ramp. Then, let's make the transparent animation shader. And let's connect the mix shader to the material output. Next, let's go back to the 3D viewport by pressing Ctrl space. Then, in the viewport, set it to material preview now we need a way to control how the gradient will be mapped on, on the cylinder to do this let's add an empty now let's go back to the material and in the texture coordinates set it to object and the object to empty now let's preview the color ramp by control shift clicking on the node we should display the color ramp in the viewport. Next, let's flip the color ramp and set it to be spline. Now, let's scale the empty so that the gradient ramp will roughly go to the end of the cylinder. Next, let's connect the mix shader to the material output and let's connect the color ramp to the mix shaders factor. For now, the material is not being displayed properly. To correct this, let's go to the material settings and set the blend mode to alpha blend and the shadow mode to alpha hashed. Now let's add a noise texture node. Next, we need to mix this with the color ramp node. Control Shift right click on the color ramp node and drag it to the noise texture node. Now, set the blending mode to multiply and set the factor to 1. To make the noise more prominent, 
is add a new color ramp node and put it in between the mix and noise texture node. By moving the color ramp sliders, we can control how the noise will look like in the viewport. Here, I'm adjusting the roughness and detail values of the noise texture node to get the look that I want. Now let's color the jet plume. Let's add a new color ramp node and connect it to the emission shader. Next, I will switch the color stop positions and add in a new color stop. Next, let's select the middle color stop and set it to an orange tint. And let's move the right color stop and move it a little to the left and set the interpolation to be spline. Start adjusting the admission shader strength. Here, I'm just setting the color ramp to be spline to make the noise a bit smoother. Let's select the noise texture node and press Ctrl T to add a mapping and texture coordinate. Next, we need to check which location axis we need to animate. In this case, it's the Y axis. Next, right click on the Y location axis and select insert single keyframe next select the mapping node and the cylinder in the viewport now let's expand the timeline and expand the title summary until we see the shader node 3 and the y value move the playhead to frame 20 and in the mapping node set the y value to 1 meter and insert a single keyframe In the timeline, press Ctrl Tab to convert it to Graph Editor. Select all the keyframes and press T, then choose Linear Interpolation. Now, we need the noise animation to play continuously throughout the timeline. And to do this, we need to add the Cycles modifier on the last keyframe of the Y value. Now, we need to set the cycles before and after mode from repeat motion to repeat with offset. Now, let's play back the animation. Notice that the animation is moving backwards. To reverse this, let's select the keyframe on frame 20 and move it down the graph editor to reverse the flow. You can adjust the speed of the noise flow by moving the keyframe at frame 20 up or down.
Next, let's add the Displace modifier. Set the strength to 0.2, then add a new texture. Now, let's go to the Texture tab. In the Texture Type drop-down list, select Clouds. Let's enable wireframe so that we have a better view of the display's effect. Now, to animate the displace modifier, we need something to move the coordinates. Let's add in a new empty, and this time, let's choose a spear empty. Click the cylinder again, and in the displace modifier, in the coordinates, choose object. In the object coordinate box, click the eyedropper icon and click on the new empty in the viewport. Now, once we move the spear empty, notice how the displace modifier is moving along with the spear empty's location. Now all we need to do is animate the spear empty. Before we do that, let's scale the spear empty by 1.6 on the X axis. Next, move the playhead back to frame 1. Then in the transform tab, insert the keyframe on the location X. Move the playhead to frame 20. Then move the spear empty by 4 meters in the X axis. And in the transform tab, add another keyframe on the location X. In the timeline, press Ctrl tab. Then select all the keyframes and press T and set it to linear interpolation. Next, select the keyframe of frame 20 and let's add a cycles modifier and set the before and after mode to repeat with offset. Now, let's turn off the wireframe and extras then play back the animation. Next, let's increase the strength of the displace modifier to 0.4 and let's add a subdivision modifier. the output property stop, set the frame rate to 30 fps. Let's refine the bloom a bit further. Now, the jet blue shouldn't be sharp at the edges, so to fix this, we need to add in a few more nodes. In the ed shader editor, let's add a Fresnel node and color ramp node. Connect the Fresnel to the color ramp node, then Ctrl Shift click on the color ramp to preview it in the viewport. Next, set the color ramp to be spline. Then, flip the color ramp, adjust it a little bit to the left, 
then add in a new color stop. Set this new color stop to black. Then continue adjusting the color stops until you, the plume fades in the edges. Next, let's make the two color ramps together. Set the blending to multiply. And set the factor to 1. Then, let's connect this mix RGB's color output to the other mix RGB's color 1 input. Now, let's connect the mix shader to material output. On the EV render settings, let's turn on Bloom. Then, in the shader editor, let's increase the strength of the emission shader. This concludes the first part of this tutorial and on the second part we will create the inner part of the jet plume. Thanks for watching.